F shirt. Uh, he also does a class, which he's probably going to talk about uh, during his talk. No, not really. Uh, about uh, uh, data recovery, which both some Ninja Master and I have taken the class. Uh, I can tell you that after five days of sitting in this guy's training class, blood was coming out of my nose and ears <laughs> because he crammed us so full of information, good information, uh, in those five days, stuff that I could definitely uh, go back to the real world and use and, and have many times since then. So, uh, what was it? Uh, was it I remember Freaknik last year that I asked you to do the talk. Freaknik. For Freaknik, I asked him. He, he's done some real high-end uh, multimedia uh, presentations at DEF CON and Schmoo and Black Hat. Uh, and I said, you know what? Those are really cool. It takes a while to get them done. Why don't you do the top ten things you didn't know about your hard drive? And that one actually was fairly popular, and it made the circuit for all the big talks and everything. Yep. And he came back to me and said, oh, I got one. Raid by sight and sound. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> it just keeps getting better every time. I'm waiting to see the one you do at uh, DEF CON this year, which you may or may not want to talk about. <laughs> but uh, uh, Scott is uh, very, very knowledgeable on hard drives. And if you ever had one and you thought you'd like to crack it apart, check with him and uh, uh, get some good information from him. If you get a chance, take his class. Uh, if not, at least get on uh, YouTube and look for his videos or anything. It's some really, really good information. Um, so I'm going to get out of the way so he can get started. Y'all have fun. <coughs> And there's no doubt that I'm going to run over, especially now. There's no way I can cut 10 minutes out of this. You kidding me? Run over, man. All right. Yeah. Real quick, if I can. For all the DC portal porters and anybody else, uh, we're uh, going to dinner right now. <laughs> you have not seen this one. We're going, we're going to get Seriously. a barbecue. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're going to up front and watch it out. All right. What, what, is this, what is this song? This one is Raid Reconstruction by Sight and Sound. You haven't seen this one. I have not subjected you to my beta talk for this one. All right. Okay, so here's the story. I do hard drives. I do a ton of hard drives. I'm primarily dealing with physical recoveries. So I deal with the stuff that's like, you know, a, a hard drive got shot with a, a gun and there's a bullet hole through the PCB board or something like that. As long as it doesn't hit the platters, I'm in pretty good shape. Uh, so I actually do physical repair and go through a number of things, done some things for FBI and a couple other things. So. Uh, so that's kind of the, the story in the background, and that actually precludes everything that's about to happen here, because now the issue becomes, you know, if you've seen my other talks and you've actually gone through some of the stuff about physical repair, you know, it's getting kind of old now. Everybody knows that I do physical repair and it's, and it's there. Now what do you do once you've actually repaired something or you have some damage? Let's assume, for instance, in a RAID array that you had some really bad sectors, and that these bad sectors, you were able to actually clone the drive using some special tools, and I've got a whole bunch of other tricks for, for cloning things that have really bad sectors, even getting things ignoring ECC and a bunch of other errors, which you can go back and look at some videos and figure out. But uh, the issue becomes, all right, you've got some damage, and it's too damaged to put back in the original RAID array, that you can't just take this and actually put the stuff back on the controller and get it running again. So what do you do? Uh, you know, or what if you don't have the original controller? Or even worse than that, what if you don't know how it was configured? Let's say, you know, in my shop, I just get three drives in the mail, and they just say RAID 5 on them, and I've got to figure out most everything. Uh, in some cases, I'm lucky enough that they might have written the order of the drives that they took them out in. Usually, I'll know something. Usually, they'll tell me one thing or another. Uh, and this is typically irregardless of, of file systems. This is in between. I did a physical recovery, and I did a file system. So basically, what I'm going to do really quick is uh, I'm going to just kind of hit, and some of you may know some of the basics and whatever, but I'm trying to be specific about why I'm talking about it for recovery. And then I'm going to do a demo at the end. I'm actually going to, I have, I have DD images of a RAID array on my drive, three, three physical RAID drives, and I'm going to reassemble them here live in real time in a few minutes. So uh, that's pretty much the way that's going to go. So uh, demos are not what I normally do in my presentation. So you have flash animations in your presentation. I have one. I have one. I have one. This one's really, you know, this one's really, yeah. Well, a little, little <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a little bit. You'll see. All right. So, so anyway, so it's going to be uh, brief coverage of RAID what is not RAID and what you're going to screw with, then RAID 0, RAID 5, and then I'm going to do a demo. So I'm going to hit you with a lot of stuff and uh, sight and sound. That's kind of the point. Uh, the other thing is, is that besides assuming that you have actually been able to physically image this drive, because that's typically what you're going to do when you have a RAID array, you're going to take the bad drive and you're going to image it. 
in some fashion. You're going to figure out how to get that image repaired, get the drive running, and go on and go on. Uh, but now that you've actually got this, what are you going to do for the reconstruction? And then the other idea that I have here is I want to do this on the cheap. I don't want to go spend in, you know, I don't want to go try to do, anybody done RAID reconstructions before? Anybody in the room ever tried? Yeah? It's a bitch, isn't it? It's like the hardest thing you can do. It takes weeks to do it and get it right, but there are some things that you can do to get it, you know, fundamental. Anybody ever tried to use Encase to do a RAID reconstruction? It freaking bombs or something crashes and you spend $3,700 on it? Well, anyway, so I'm trying to do this 100 bucks or less. That's pretty much my point. How do you do this? The hacker way. So, <clears throat> so let me talk about just, you know, from a RAID standpoint, it's supposed to be a redundant array of inexpensive or independent drives. It actually started out as inexpensive, and this is one of them terms that gets kind of munged up a little bit. Uh, you know, then you take it to your boss and you go, I need this RAID array, and he says, what is a RAID? And you go, redundant array of inexpensive, and they look at it and they go, inexpensive? What the hell? So, so people kind of switch to independent disks and stuff like that now. Uh, and then the term has, you know, before 10 years ago, you didn't just find people having RAIDs at home and stuff like that. So it's become a marketing term kind of thing where you'll go to a store and you go buy a Lacey drive and it's just, uh, it, it says RAID on the box and they bought it because they thought it was redundant. So, so it's not, and so that's pretty much the issue here. And that's where you're dealing with some of these things like JBODs. Uh, so JBOD just means a bunch of disks. It is not a, it is not a RAID. It is just two drives in order, concatenated in some fashion, maybe custom written software or something. Most of the time you see them and they look like this box. If you've seen these, you know, lacy boxes, you take them open, you got two drives or something like this. Now, in, it, they change their boxes quite often. So in some cases they may not be a JBOD, they may actually be a RAID array. Or you may end up with something like this, which is their NAS boxes. Anybody got this lacy NAS box, has a Ethernet cable coming out of it? You guys have this? No? Okay, so. So basically what they do is they create like uh, two partitions at the beginning of the disk that have a Linux boot on them and then they have the rest of the partition set aside and that's rated with the rest of the other disk. So you've got a little bit more complications. You've got an offset on the first drive that you've got to get past and then look at the two sets of data and restripe those things back together again before you have any data. Because if you just say this drive and this drive and put them back together, you won't have your data. And you have, some, again, this is not in relation to the actual file system, but you have to use file systems in some cases to figure this out and then to extract the files. But typically, like if you're looking at a JPEG on a disk, it doesn't matter what the file system was. Typically, it's still a JPEG and it's still got the same stuff unless it's something like XFS. Uh, XFS may, may raid stuff or may put it in, in out of order. So you've got some, some other things to deal with. And then you've got dynamic disks, which, uh, you know, in the Windows world, it's just basi basically they're just taking in appending the configuration at the end of a disk. And you can have multiple drives in volumes. And, but these are fairly easy to actually put back together. If you can get the drives running again, I'm using a, a piece of software that's 79 bucks. It's called RStudios. And uh, I'm independent. I'm not, like, you know, selling RStudios. But it's a cheap, easy way to figure stuff out. And uh, RStudios, if you put a... Uh, a, a dynamic disk on it, it'll actually tell you, oh look, I see, you know, even if it's just one of them and the other one's not good, it'll still tell you from the configuration that you've got content there and you can put those back together. If you want to know more about that one, I actually did like a 10 minute movie. I actually reassemble them in about 10 minutes. So you can figure that one out and go on YouTube and find that. So, uh, so just to kind of hit just the basics of what we're going to talk about, RAID 0 is basically a stripe. So your problem is normally in a RAID 0, in most cases, you're looking at two disks. So you go to buy these Lacey drives, you got two disks. You can have way more than two disks. And that's where the problem starts coming in tremendously from a standpoint of trying to figure out what the order of the disks are. If you end up with something like a RAID 0 six disk array, well, you've got a lot of combinations of stuff that you have to play with to try to figure out what the order of these drives were. Most of the time, there's no sequencing of the drives. They use all the space on the drive, and they don't write a signature at the beginning of the disk that says, hi, I'm disk one. Hi, I'm disk two. So people pull them out, and they just you know, ship them off someplace, and they don't mark them. And so now you've got a problem of figuring out which one's the first disk, or even, in many cases, custom stripe sizes. So most of the time, what you're looking at is you'll have a disk, and it'll have a stripe size. And by default, it's normally like 64K. So your problem is now, well, how do I figure out the order, and how do I figure out what my stripe size is if I don't know it, and I've got to reassemble this, you know, munged up, damaged disk. So I'm going to get into that. RAID 1, hopefully you'll never see. RAID, it got cut off. And then RAID 5. Uh, once you get up into most of the others, so your most common that you're going to see is a RAID 1 